kolom vanem ma valab professori sistemaatis teologii või teaks ei Porsche universiteet, ohk on kolmand komagrammi in skrift, sa võite üpsi, eli ehk kui vaid sitaat on Rüüdes Turga Lahtepeeks kommentaar. Ti Cheva Truun, et Kristus näeb on need. Mind äsken juba näeb ära omu, ohk saake nagu nüüd ennada, et internationelud märksavid osamdilid Hallevaanid Faaro meil jätta Nesambits from Kristus Tõõrust ja Iiospo või tuur, et see koola ei või rehta ja siit see rehta samana. Ja see ente rahutaja võtta või foorilu ja see ei põrjaage, ohk mis lausu on frustoodin proventa, so pans po FTD Kalla marxistis ka sekstikaale, et noore või huuta, et Kalla on transcendent näärvaru ja transcendent värvik, et see oli Johansi investeerning poole, me nii igin teed rehts, see on johta ei, ohk mõki ole jääskavi, kui nüüd näära, kus on teha, ma suud. Sakri Venile, ti professioonen arkitekt, ohk hana interesseeras ei põe teologii joo, ohk ja ka see ja teha, hane ei näe nii petri teologe ja nüüd, hana ei tee nüüd pilgi ja nüüd. Kan on teie omroolid, et olnud. Ma suus. Jäta minu nüüd. Joo, joo, toh kodan. This paper will be given in English language and... Ei teile mõõi kõks ole... Joo, det finns på finska i tekst. Ah, ja. Deras tõud. Ja. So I started. This is not my yet my lecture. I I interested about joint declaration about 1996, and that is the main reason why I'm I why I'm why I'm now here. I I started to concentrate to this topic because I I was earlier became familiar with uh, Luther's commentary of Galatians and uh, I, I liked it very much and it was a very important book for me. And then I uh, realized that uh, this joint declaration, so it is the ecumenical uh, paper between Lutherans and Catholics and there was claims in this discussion that uh, this Luther's Galatian commentary of Paul uh, would include love in faith, and I remember that it isn't so. I, I had read this book, and it was very important to me, and it was a surprise to me when I read it first time. That there was not love in faith, and I was very. Uh, that that is why why I remember it so well, and then that was the reason that I started to concentrate to this topic and uh, it took a uh, few years for me. I, I also have, have a right to study in Oku Academy, one university of Turku, this topic. I, I, I am as a doctoral thesis maker it since uh, 2011. Okay, I think that uh, this was enough for, for the reason and my background. Thank, thanks for Halvar introducing also me. Okay, uh, let's start. I go quite, quite uh, keen through this paper because I think it is easier for you to follow from these Finnish papers also. Uh, the first part is uh, uh, about Mannerma's ecumenical interpretation of Luther's thinking. As, as preface, I say, uh, first, uh, first we have to clarify Mannermas, what Mannerma is saying, what he tries to prove. Therefore, let us next look at Mannerma's book in Ipsa Fide Christus Adest, after his Ipsa survey, which is widely considered to be his groundbreaking magnum opus. The name of the book means, in faith there is Christ present, or Christ is present in faith itself. Uh, there is also an English book, and it is entitled concisely, Christ Present in Faith. Uh, 
As we will see, this sentence and the content of the whole book is directly related to the ecumenical debate which is handled in this study. So Mannerman starts his uh, book uh, clarifying a basis for justifying faith, his, his thoughts about it. In the chapter one of this book, Mannerman brings out through Luther quotes, Luther's understanding of Christ as the only sinner. And uh, this is the Luther quote. And all the prophets saw this, that Christ was to become the greatest thief, murderer, adulterer, robber, desecrator, blasphemer, etc. There has ever been anywhere in the world. He is not acting in his own person now. Now he is not the son of God born in the virgin, but he is a sinner who has and bears the sin of Paul, the former blasphemer, persecutor and assaulter, of Peter who denied Christ, of David who was an adulterer and murderer and who caused the Gentiles to blaspheme the name of the Lord. In short, he has and bears all the sins of all people in his body, not in the sense he, that he has committed them, but in the sense that he took these sins committed by, uns, committed by us upon his own body, in order to make satisfaction for them with his own blood. Mannerma concludes, this is Mannerma's text, <clears throat> the idea of Christ as the greatest person, Maxima Persona, culminate this in the notion of Christ as the only sinner, solo spectator. After the Logos has become flesh, there is no sin at all anywhere in else but in his person. Christ is immersed submersus in all sins, and all sins are immersed in him. This idea is starting point of Luther's doctrine of atonement. In Luther's, and now is my text, I comment on. In Luther's thinking here, the sin of man seems to be, in the way Mondarma brings it out, illusion. Only faith avoids this illusion because faith sees in sin placed on Christ. Mannerma regards this as an example to prove the essential condition in, of, of incarnation theology and atonement doctrine in which Christ is a kind of collective personality which in real way combines the personalities of all human beings and their sins. He won the battle between righteousness and sin in himself. Thereafter, the whole world is to be transformed through his personality. Mannerma concludes, salvation is participation in person of Christ. And this is the background of Mannerma's uh, further theology or, uh, or Luther interpretation, and I'm, not going, or I'm going to move it now. Christ present in faith as the basis for salvation. In his book, Mannerma introduces his thought, claiming it to be Luther's opinion that the declaration of righteous and making righteous through Christ living in the heart of a human being are inseparable. Mannerman writes, the Christ who dwells in faith in Christians is the Christian righteousness that God imputes to them. Here he also cites Luther on which he bases his argument. Luther says, therefore the Christ who is grasped by faith and who lives in the heart is the true Christian righteousness on account of which God counts us righteous and grants us eternal life. Mandarma continues, Luther even says that the faith that unites the Christ, Christian with Christ is the basis and reason for the imputation. Here is also to be noted that these three things are joined together, faith, Christ and acceptance of him or imputation. Faith takes hold of Christ and has him present, enclosing him as the ring encloses the dead. And whoever is found having this faith in the Christ who is grasped in the heart, him God accounts as righteous. This is the cause, ratio, and the, the merit by which we obtain by, by we, which we obtain the forgiveness of sins and righteousness. Because you believe me, God says, and your faith takes hold of Christ, whom I have freely given you as your justifier and savior, therefore be righteous. Thus God, thus God accepts you or accounts you righteous only account of Christ in whom you believe. Above Mannerma told, this was the end of quote, above Mannerma told that 
in Luther's thinking the Christi Christian righteousness consists of two factors, the faith of the heart and the counting as righteous of, by God. Faith is real righteousness, but it is only beginning because of its weakness. For the remaining sins is then required the counting of the merit of Christ for Christian, which happens on the basis of Christ. Luther quote. Uh, excuse me from the this ipsa. Thus Luther's fundamental idea can be expressed by saying that faith is the beginning of real, real, real righteousness, while hope imputes this initial righteousness is perfect. As long as one lives in this age, fits ergo incipit reputatio perficit usque ad illum die. It's because of the imperfectness of faith that imputation is necessary. Here again, Manerman quotes Luther. Make now the following distinction. Faith is imputed to him as righteousness for the sake of Christ. 1. Faith is a divinely granted gift through which I believe in Christ. 2. God recounts this imperfect faith as perfect righteousness. Here Manerman considers that it is well based to ask about the status of faith and Christ in connection with being declared righteous. And then Manerman. To begin with, it is obvious that Luther is familiar with the forensic aspect of justification and related to that, the idea of the imputation of righteousness to the sinner for the sake of Christ. However, Luther's view is not simply and solely forensic, and so he says, for example, to take hold of the Son and to believe in, believe in him with the heart as the gift of God causes God to recall the faith as righteousness. Manerma asks, does this mean then that in Luther's opinion, human beings are not just justified for Christ's sake alone, but also an account of something which is within themselves, i.e. faith? As the solution to this question, Manerma puts forth the basic idea of his study, that Christ is inseparably and inconfusedly both God's favor, favor, Latin, and gift, donum Latin. Ipsa 53 is the place to find. As to favor Manerma, as, as to favor, Manerma sees this as God's favorable heart to a man as a gift. On the other hand, the real presence of Christ, which convey, conveys in, inclusion of divine nature, namely righteousness, life, salvation, bliss, strength, blessing, etc., for the believer. Nevertheless, Christ is also present at the same time, according to Manerma, as the favor of God, in other words, the forgiveness of sins. Uh, uh, this is a, an important notice. Uh, the presence of Christ is also favor. We are not justified for the sake of anything that originates from us, says Manerma, but for, sake, for the sake of Christ, who is presented in us in faith. Then, an important thing also, Luther against the formula of Concord. Manerma's central argument for his main idea described the ball, where eventually the pure forensic, thus legal, forgiveness righteousness, based on being declared righteous, will be replaced with an opinion where the righteousness clearly is donated on the basis of both forgiveness and gift. So, Christ who is present in faith. It's important to notice, note that Manerma sees as a result of this argumentation that Luther's thinking contradicts the historical later part of the simple books of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, namely the Formula of Concord. Uh, and again, Manerma, <clears throat> in its argument that the presence of the Trinity in faith is not the same phenomenon as the righteousness of faith, the FC draws the later theology of Melanchthon, on which much of the Lutheran theology after Luther has relied. In the theology of the FC, justification is understood in a one saving forensic manner, that is, only a re reception of the forgiveness that is imputed to Christians for the sake of the obedience and merit of Christ. The inhabited theory is considered as a consequence, a consequence of this righteousness of faith, i.e. the forgiveness of sins. In theology of Luther, however, the relation between justification and the divine indwelling in the believer is defined differently. 
After this, Mannerma refers to Luther that he thinks when Christ is not distinct apart from his, in addition to that, his work on the cross, righteousness of Christian. The idea in Ipsa Fide Christus Adest work, i.e. apparently, e.g. atoning work of the cross, Christ who is ontologically really present in faith influences that through faith both the person of Christ and his work are present. Quote of Mannerman. Luther, no, Luther's notion of the righteousness of faith is permeated by Christological, Christological thinking. Formal of Concord refers to Luther's lectures of Galatians 1535, so from the year 1535, as an ultimate authority. That is why Mannerman believes that there is, after all, though the final position also of Formal of Concord about the doctrine of justification. This Mannerman, however, sees an internal contradiction of Formula of Concord. Luther's theology does namely not constitute an uniform system with more Formula of Concord, i.e. with Formula of Concord itself, of which some kind of the outer part lectures of Galatians apparently on Mannerman's opinion is, which he bases on the fact that Formula of Concord refers to Lutheran lectures on Galatians. So, According to Mannerma, he is able to challenge the formula of concord and by that means also the normative understanding of justification also in the current 1979 Finnish Evangelical Lutheran Church. Uh, and here is a keen, keener quote from about, adopted by most of subsequent Lutheranism. Then we go to Union. Union between Christ and the Christian. Manama argues that Christ would be seen as an ultimate subject of good deeds of human being, i.e., Christ is the real author. The unification of man and Christ in faith has led to extreme conclusion. According to Manama, in Luther's thinking, the unification of man and Christ, simply union, goes so far that it's possible to talk about a single personality which consists of both man and Christ. Christ, who through faith is dwelling in human being, is also called a gift don. Manama. In the eyes of human beings, this gift Christ is small, but it is smallness is greater than the entire world. It is possible that this is also from Lutheranism. Elsewhere in the book, the parable of the tree and fruit, quoted from the Luther Bible, are also mentioned, where the tree is a man of good deeds and the fruit itself are the deeds. The parable of tree makes uh, quote, the parable of a tree makes evident the real, almost physical and natural quality of the holiness that a human being, in Luther's view, receives in faith. The starting point for the reformist view is the idea presented in the New Testament, according to which a tree must first become good and only then can it bear good fruit. The essence of Jewish or substance of tree must change. This takes place in justifying faith in which Christ, Christ comes into the human being. Thus, faith creates a new tree that is a new person which bears good fruit. These points are related to the central idea of Manerma only of his view. Luther does not distinguish justification from sanctification. I believe that this is the very idea of Mannerma, which leads to the main arguments in the ecumenical document between Catholics and Lutherans, as we shall see later in the study. The main idea of Mannerma's interpretation of Luther's theology about justification, therefore, is, by my own words, the following. Faith owns Christ so that, as Luther says, Christ is present in faith itself in ipsa fide Christus adest. Since faith consists Christ and Christ consists love, it is also not wrong to say that faith consists love. Then I have this photo there, there who you, you have this, my, my paper version, you can see the, the figure which tries to clarify relations between human being faith, Christ with the present and in faith and love, according to the interpretation of Mannerma. Uh, and okay, the next paragraph, next, next. The Luther inter interpretation of Mannerma as an ecumenical viewpoint. So, this is how Mannerma argued for his position in 1979. Now, I will examine the later period of Mannerma's thinking through his essay 
in the Theological Journal Theologinen Aikakauskirja, TA, uh, in 1990. In it, he uses the achievements of his Luther research described above as a weapon for the ecumenical negotiations between the Roman Catholic Church and Evangelical Lutheran Church. The book of, the book of Ipsa Fide Christus Arrest has also been written in openly ecumenical target. In the book, it was tried to find the intersection between Lutheran and Orthodox views of doctrine. That was allegedly also found in the book through just its main theme, in Ipsa Fide Christus Arrest, so Christ is present exactly in fine cell. Uh, quote. The analysis of Luther theology in lectures, lectures of, on Galatians show that this doctrine of justification involves a way of thinking that can be described by using the technical term divinization or deification. So, becoming God. In the year 1990, Manner was, by his own words, in a situation in which the evangelical Catholic dialogue was at an impasse. Dead end. In the article Evangelist Catholic Dialogue in English Evangelical Catholic Dialogue in Deadlock, Marma commented Jörg Paul's article Einig in Sachen Rechtfertigung, where Paul severely, uh, severely attacked against the Evangelical Catholic document Lehrwehr und Teilungen Kirchentrennen. Evangelical and Catholic theologians, which worked at an ecumenical working team, had presented a solution for the ecumenical problem about the doctrine of justification. The working group believed that the consensus is not to be looked in the level of expressions as false, expressions and forms, not even directly by handling the old condemnations, but one should show the hidden common basis behind the verbal expressions. Mutual, doctrin well, mutual doctrinal condemnations lose their power when they can be understood in relation with the common center as, and as different types of its expressions and formulations. This common center in relation to outer doctrinal forms was also described by the couples of expressions like common basic understanding distinct, distinctive doctrines, thing, priority setting, Intention means of expression, the internal center of one's we, a different formation of doctrine or presentation of the doctrine, etc. These couples describe the basic distinction of the working team, which acted as a hermeneutical key, key to solve the ecumenical problem. <laughs> According to Mannerma, Paul criticized the working group, especially based on the fact that the above mentioned uh, above men mentioned pairs of expressions as common basic understanding without any proof only assumed. At this point, Mannerma seems essentially accept the criticism of Paul and confesses that the ecumenical debate on the issue has come to a dead end. Particularly, he highlights Bauer's discovery of how the 10th Canon of Council of Trent rejects the idea which is essential to the working team, namely that Christ would be made people sub substantially righteous. Mannerma, however, boldly bases the way for ecumenism forward. He claims that the criticism of Bauer is valid only in that event that the idea of FC on which this criticism is based will be maintained. As I may mentioned above, Mannerma himself had already stated 1979 in the book Ipsa that understanding of justification of in FC was crucially different from perception of Luther. So, Mannerma bases his arguments on his finding where the presence of Christ in Christian is seen as real ontic and above all understood in the light of the idea of union, i.e. exactly on the basis of the presence of Christ in faith, which belongs also to the doctrine of justification. Quote, if the union between, this is from TA article in which uh, Manarma was writing about this Bauer book. If the union between Christ and the believer uh, is a constitutive element of justification, participation of, in Christ also implies the participation in the divine nature, which is love. The theology of Luther can be seen as a consistent theology of love. This theology theology of love is still an unused ecumenical capital. 
Here we get an ecumenical jigsaw puzzle piece related to the Roman Catholic Church, for it, in its thinking the gift is before the grace. The love which is flooded, flooded in the heart gives the salvation, at least partly. This conducts into the conflict with the FC, which is a part of the political book of Lutherans. Therefore, the opinion of FC by which Christ is in heart doesn't belong in justification must become denied. This is easier of the opinion of Mannerman because in FC itself it has been confessed, confessed that Luther's explanation to Paul, Paul's brief to Galatians is an authority of it. So, um, <clears throat> this work of Luther, however, consists opinion mentioned before about Christ present in faith as a part of the doctrine of justification, which FC rejected Myron thinks. Now, this is the first part of my, my uh, exam, and uh, uh, I, the, the second, I ask one question before moving to the second part. I ask, what is the object of faith by Mannerman? This is very important for me personally. So, I did so that I called Mannerman 29th of January 1998 and I asked clarification how he thinks about the object of faith. He answered that the Christ present in faith would not be an object of, or focus of the faith but even denies to believe in it, because that would sink a man to an uncertainty. So, not, not to be secret. The object of the faith is only and alone Christ on the cross, and exactly this kind of the faith gives Christ in the heart. Now I say to this, I see this an unsolved controversy to the opinion which is present in Ipsa, page 31, where present person, namely Christ, is seen also as an object of faith. Well, Luther's notion of faith, this is Mannerma's quote from Ipsa. Luther's notion in, on faith, of faith cannot be understood correctly if Christ is regarded merely as any item can be an object of human knowledge. Rather, the object of faith is a person who is present, and therefore he is in fact also the subject. Here is the note, end of the quote. Here is the no, note, here is to be noted that this object of faith depends necessarily about the faith itself, because Manama continues immediately. Luther says that Christ is object of faith, but not merely the object, rather, rather Christ is present in faith itself. So, this uh, presence of Christ is, uh, I can conclude, it is not, for example, in only baptism. It is in faith. And uh, when Manerma says that, uh, that we have to believe in it, it is this uh, Christ in faith. So I conclude, this is my text. Firstly, this inter interpretation of Manerma, I think, drives necessarily also the faith itself to an object of faith, which is often considered to influence uncertainty among Lutherans, as also Mannerma himself told me and said it is not wise to do so when I called him. Secondly, also the placement of Christ present in faith into the basis of justification, as it seems to happen in Mannerma's inter interpretation, fights against this his own expression about, because on my opinion, the faith is always focused to the basis of justification. Okay. Now, the second part. How is this uh, receptive in Finland? The reception of Mannerman School by some revi revivalist movement theologians in Finland. Uh, preface. After the publishing of Tuomo Mannerman's main work in Ipsa Fide Christus Adest, uh, also many revivalist theologians in Finland saw many positive aspects in Mannerman's then named the Luther inter interpretation. He was considered as activating Luther results and the main idea of the book Ipsa, the presence of Christ in faith in the Union, was originally accepted as a welcome critic against the so-called Lund's Luther School in Sweden. Lund's school was considered to have drifted into 
a very ethical tone to look at interpretation. Mannerman's trailblazing research was also seen to indicate that the alleged difference between pietism, pietism and the Luther's thinking was being exaggerated. In the long run, Mannerman's idea, however, did not reach an unanimous acceptance among all the Finnish revivalist theologians. Criticism aroused, e.g., the fact that in Mannerman's Luther interpretation, the presence of Christ in faith expanded the concept of it, so that into faith, and because of that also into justification. We are talking about the faith justification in the Bible also. There were features included which are characteristic to sanctification, such as love. In this case, the difference between justification and sanctification disappears, or at least obscures. Some theologians fear. Also, the fact that Manerma saw the conflict between Formula of Concord and Luther aroused arguing against it. Confrontation of opinions culminated, especially in the middle of the 19th, when Manerma put forth the concept of the presence of Christ in faith as an ecumenical solution to the problem of Lutheran Catholic negotiations during the preparation of the joint declaration. In the article Evangelis Catholic Dialogi Umbikujassa, Mannerma commented on Jörg Bau's article Heinrich in Sachen Rechtfertigung, where Bau severely, severely attacked, attacked against the evangelical Catholic document, led by Ultalevin Kirchenreimen, as I told before. In LV and ecumenical, so this I call later LV, LV this Lerber Urta Ilungen document. In LV, LV an ecumenical working group had handled the doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church and Evangelical Lutheran Church, trying to find a hidden common center with good function as the starting point for the ecumen between the churches. Brau criticized the ecumenical group especially about the thing that it only assumed a common basis behind the different expressions of the doctrinal documents of them, without any proof that on one would exist. According to Paul Bau, this finding should have done basing on the explicit expressions in the text of both churches. In his review, Manama tried to solve this problem using his point of view about union as a key for the deadlock, influenced by Bau. Manama bases his arguments here instead of Luther's lectures of Galatians, which was central to his Ipsa, mainly on Luther's Latomus Latum, commentary, where Luther deals faith understood as a key. Also, the ecumenical book in Rome had used the same well in the book which Paul criticized. By Mannerma, all the problem culminates to the relation between the Lutheran concepts grace, donum, and gift favor. Bauer had accused the working group about confusing these terms with each other. Instead of this, Bauer differs them most far from each other. Mannerma, however, proposes that Bauer interprets Luther from the point of view which is very near to Formula Concord FC. The main problem here is then that, according to Mannerma, the theology of FC differs strongly from that of Luther's, exactly in the question about grace and the key. Bauer underestimates the difference between Luther and FC. Thus, Mannerma tries to prove these his claims, especially by using the above mentioned writing of Luther, the Latin scholar. At the end of his writing, Manma reduces the idea for solving the ten ecumenical deadlock. And I, I read already this, but I read it again. If the union between Christ and the believer is a constitutive element of justification, participation in Christ also implies the participation in the divine nature, which is love. The theology of Luther can be seen as a consistent theology of love. This theology of love is still an unused ecumenical capital. Uh, I say to this, in the citation about Mannerma refers to love, so it is obvious that love is an important theme which man, by Mannerma was hoped to get used into ecumenical negotiations between Lutheran and Roman Catholic churches. I will return to this theme in the conclusions of my lecture. And then I take these critics, and first uh, is Dr. Theologian Doctor, Doctor of Theology, Timo Lato. Uh, who criticized this uh, Mannerma's article in Theologian and High Cross Career, T.A. Theologian. Uh, Timolato estimated this Mannerma's writing in the T.A. 1995. 
The title of Luther's writing was Luther, Luther tutkimuksemme epäselvyys vanhurraskattomisopin ytimessä. Luther latomusta vastaan, laatu mannermoita vastaan. The unclarity in English in the name of the article is the unclarity at the center of the doctrine of justification in our Luther results. Luther against Latomus, Lato against Mannerman. The article of Lato is an answer to Mannerman's book review, which I touched about. According to Lato, Mannerman explicitly rejects the primacy of grace in relation to the gift. He defines their relationship rather as oppositeness. Gift is the basis and precondition of grace. Lato highlights that this is the fundamental error of Mannerman. Against it, Luther thinks so, that by Lato, that the grace affects the gift. Basing on the Lato's writing, which also Mannerman used, Lato says that the talk of union interpreting, like that of Mannerman, is not enough to calm the heart so, of a sinner, of a human being in front of God. But this is an is accomplished by grace. Forgiveness causes mercy and peace. Faith as gift, again healing from the depravity. Christ justifies because the faith have resource to Christ who has earned the complete righteousness for all over the world. Faith is only an internal, grace an external. Since the gift offer grace, no room for doubt remains. Christ who dwells in the heart of a Christian is no one other that than Christ who died on the cross. End of the quote. I interpret that Lato wants to make a distinction between grace and gift. First, the grace of God, forgiveness as, an, as the attitude towards the sinner inside God's mind, influences delightment in a human being, and only then follows faith as a gift, and it influences then the other good things like sanctification, love, etc. In believer. It's important, according to Lato, to always think that the grace is first, the gift only the second, functioning as a sequence of the grace. Also, internal, external expressions about clearly seek to distinguish the grace from the gift as keen as possible. Lato wants against Mannerman's goal, keep these things completely separated from each other. After, uh, after the text point from Lato's commentary, which Mannerma used to emphasize that gift does, gift goes before grace by Luther, and a person does not have grace without faith, Luther solves by Lato, in fact, the superiority of the grace or gift. Because in the grace there is no sin, but in the gift, or at least alongside it, there is. Christ as a favor, therefore, creates, creates himself as a donor where faith is functioning as an umbilical cord. The patriot and the born are one and the same person. When handling Lato, when handling the citation of Luther, so the quote of Luther, which also Manama used, claims that the superiority of grace to the gift is expressed so that Luther always mentioned the grace before the gift. Lato tries here to emphasize the grace more than the gift. From Lato's opinion, the grace is more important. The first thing than the gift which has to keep as the second thing. And compared to gift, grace is also first in the logical order of happening, so that the gift inside the human being always follows the grace which must be the first. Lato considers as important that we should not forget that Christ on the cross is more important than Christ inside us so that we could trust in something which is clearly outside of us, so that the focus of, focus of faith is in Christ on the cross, not in Christ inside us. According to Lato, also the FC, so Formula Concord, doesn't try against Luther. Christ as a whole person, I interpret both as a human being and the God, not only as this, as this or that, is our righteousness. On the other side, justification has to be understood primarily as grace, so favor, in the other words, forgiveness of sins, and after that, as the presence of Christ in us. This comforts shy and scary who have to fasten their sight to Christ, who, by bleeding his blood on the cross, eliminated the terrible hatred of God against all sinners. The battle against Osiander caused carefulness in the use of some expressions. 
by Lato. Above, Lato, in spite of his criticism against Manorma, places also himself union in justification, which, which could be a surprise. Although as a secondary to the grace and the favor outside of man, I interpret that Lato tries to defend formula of conduct of its silence, including the right way happening placement in the doctrine of justification. He does it so that although FC doesn't talk directly about it because of the danger of Oceanderism, it doesn't reject, reject it either, which by Lato obviously would really conduct against Lato. Lato reminds still the positive role of Mannerma as a starter or discussion in the Finnish theological field and the critic of the Luther school of Lund, but although summarizes his fault treating as follows. <clears throat> in my opinion, the text I have cited reveal a serious mistake in the interpretation of Mannerma. Mannerma makes a bad mistake in a very decisive point. He does not confess that the Savior depends in the end on Christ as the favor, not as the done. Manama defends, in the same journal, his power article and Luther interpretation by saying that Lato has misunderstood his review. Lato has not described correctly the point of view of Manama, and so also the critics of him were wrong. Manama does not represent such an opinion that the gift is before grace. The difficulty in understanding Luther with the concepts of FC does either not mean that the principle grace alone would be treated in. Uh, quote of Mannerma. On the contrary, when the, also the gift is Christ's own reality, the salvation is totally outside us. A human being will be saved alone through Christ, who is both grace and gift. End of quote. Lato still answers to Mannerma in TA 101, 1996. In the article, I say only in English now, all the colors of mass misunderstanding. <laughs> By defending and repeating the former arguments of his first criticism in the article I have above, Lato has, cited, Lato has by his own word, cited his Mannerma writing correctly as they stand in original texts. In Mannerma's answer, the grace is more highlighted than so this later answer to Lato. Uh, Mannerma's the grace is more highlighted than in the original review about Paul. Lato concludes that Mannerma has developed his point of view during the conversation. Lato considers a good thing that Mannerma even admits the superiority to gift, or at least does not emphasize, emphasize the superiority superiority of the gift to the grace. Now I ask, uh, how, many, how much time do I have now? You have time, I think. Okay, I have time. Then I don't take away this middle part. I ask patience if it is too long. The theologians, okay, uh, Lato was maybe the sharpest and most detailed answer, who answered to this uh, Mannerma's uh, Luther interpretation, but he is not, not the only in Finland. Also, the theologians of the... Who, who, the group of theologians wrote a book which name in English is about Does the Reformation Go in Vain? In Finnish, it is Turhen to Houskon Puhdistus. Also, Lato referred in his article, he is also one of the writers also this book. Uh, Lato referred uh, in his article, uh, so in his TA article, to a lecture in Unio, Union in the Geology of Johann Gerhard of Martin Wachturanta, and said that it awakened a thought in him that the formula of Concord could make a distinction between union and inhabitatio day. Quote, former would then connect to justification, the faith owns Christ, Later, later to sanctification, Christ dwells in the believer. Then the justification does not either base on in the Christ dwelling in a human being, but on Christ which is living outside him, favor with faith of which faith owns. The objectivity of the grace does not change to a subjective experience. End of quote. So 
By dividing the presence of Christ in faith to two forms of existence, it was possible to make a distinction also between justification and sanctification. In spite of the fact that some of Luther's expressions seem to place the presence of Christ into justification, also the formula of comfort was not wrong when denying inhabitatio Dei from justification, because inhabitatio is not the same thing as union. The relation of these two things was that union is the reason for inhabitatio Dei. This solution was quite widely accepted also among many other revivalist theologians in Finland. It is possible to observe this in, in, in this book, Turhen Tukouskonpuhdistus, in which a number of leading Finnish revivalist movement theologians strongly attacked the ecumenical process between Roman Catholic and Lutheran churches, of which result the tenth version of joint declaration, so it was Genoa 1995, was aimed to handle in the agencies of Finnish Evangelical Lutheran Church. The presence of Christ was one of the leading themes of the book, as we will see. E.g. Theotlis Simo Kiviranta, after highlighting as the basis God's acceptance of the price of Christ vows for the sinner and releasing the entire world from its sins through counting as righteous rights. Quote, the relation of cause and effect between unification, union, and Christ and the whole Trinity dwelling in us, in habitation, is an articulation of justification and the sanctification. Another writer, Ansi Simoyaku, writes, well, unification, unio mystica, belongs to the connection of justification, the dwelling of God, in habitatio, to the connection of sanctification. About the latter, the formula of convert has a clear teaching. The symbolical books do not specially speak about unio mystica, the unification of the, soul, of the soul in faith with Christ. The thing itself was not this beauty. Okay. End of quote. I see a similarity here with the solution of love, in dividing the presence of Christ into two, in explaining this for the means of separating justification from sanctification, and in explaining that, in fact, the formula of convert does not handle the union, but only inhabit the day. Theologian Dr. Mark de Wachtoranta, who bases here not straight on Luther, but on the theology of Lutheran Orthodox theologian, Johann Gerhard writes, Faith justified the godless because it unifies the sinner with Christ, and because in it God puts the righteousness of Christ upon the sinner. It is not enough that this cloth remains purified in the heavenly wardrobe, and we seek it by using our will and emotion. Christ had to come by himself in heavenly brightness as a human being and God, and to put it on us. End of quote. It's useful to notice that this solution of all the described theologians about partly accepts Marmar's conclusions about Luther and Formula of Concord. Also, here it is admitted that the Christ who is present in faith belongs to the doctrine of justification. Also, here is referred to the idea of Manerma, in which he claims that the final formulation of the relation between union and justification is an introduced more carefully in Luther's lectures on Galatians, to which FC itself refers. The, but, uh, forwards. The critic, which partly accepts the argumentation of Mannerma, but criticizes some consequences of it, is not the only group which has been arguing against Luther's interpretation of him. This comes out also in the first edition of the book Okay, I stop. There is a critic, critic which partly accepts the argumentation of Mannerma but criticizes some consequences of it. He is not the only group which has been arguing against Luther's interpretation of him. This comes also in the first edition of the Turhen book, Turhen Tuvo Uskon Puhdistus. There are two editions of it. 
where Dr. Ray Arkila refers the book Orta Salutis by Lauri Takala, or in the article of theologist Zachary Korpinen, who handles the theology of Johann Tobias von Beck. Arkila differs here from the theologians of the book uh, de described above. Although Arkila does not mention Mannerma, it's clear that Arkila does not think of Mannerma's pay about union. Korpinen problematized both the terms union and inhabited your day in connection of the doctrine of justification. So it's obvious that Korpinen does not accept the point of view about union of Mannerma's Luther interpretation as a part of justification. And uh, now I move forward from this book, Turhe du Oskumbuhistus, and uh, I, I move to Theologian Priest. Uh, also, Hannu Lehtonen. Pastor. Pastor, okay, thank you. <laughs> the members of the Sphere Iran magazine Concordia have also criticized Manerma. Hannu Lehtonen, who is the editor of the magazine, hands the book In Ipsa Fide Christus Arrest in Concordia 4 2000, in, two, in the year 2000. The article of Lehtonen is the most careful critical study about Mannerma's Luther interpretation from the later Theologian group of confessional Lutherans handled in this study. The first was majority of the writers of Turhen who divided the presence of Christ in two. That is why I checked it a little bit more carefully than the others, so I checked a little bit careful, more carefully this Lehtonen because he differs from the other theologians from the Union point. Lehtonen starts by first chapter of the book Ipsa, where Marna introduces Luther's Christology as the basis of justifying faith. In dealing with his topic, Marna bases on an argument that Luther builds on Christological thinking of early church, which Luther understands in a specific manner. Lehtonen shows that Marna understands by this special emphasis of Luther that the sinful nature of Christ as a human being. Mannerma speaks explicitly about Christ as a real sinner. Quote uh, of Hannu uh, Lehtonen. Okay, this is, this is Mannerma. The special emphasis of Lutheran theology of incarnation lies precisely in the notion that Christ became a sinful human being and that Christ was in the human nature which he assumed really the greatest sinner of all. Lehtonen does not accept the conclusion of Manner that Luther's obedience in the Incarnation there had in the same person joined together a holy God and a sinful human being. According to Lehtonen, Luther does not have this kind of special emphasis. Mannerma bases here on early Luther and does not notice that in Luther's thinking there happened a change in his point of view about the relation between Incarnation and diminishing of Christ. At least since uh, 1500, 19, Luther separated his incarnation for diminishing of Christ. Lehtonen refers here to Tom G. A. Hart, who has handled this change in his book Venerabilis et Adorabilis Eucharistia. Diminishing means in later stage of Luther's thinking that Christ voluntarily took the sin of all the human beings upon himself. Lehtonen brings out here that in the lectures on Colossians, Luther says about Christ that he had no sin in conception. Lehtonen refers here, among other things, to Luther's large catechism, where Luther says, quote, because if the conception of him, Christ, would have been impure, like all other people, he would not have been able to help us from sin and death. The object of faith, according to Lehtonen, is only Christ on the cross, where he carries our sins. The definition of Luther about the justification of faith is one of one is on the other hand forgiving of sins which is ready just because of the redemption of Christ, which is brought to us through gospel to be received by faith. So teaches also Luther, who says in his church book of Homilities, number three, one should be absolutely sure that the righteousness of us in front of God is the forgiveness of the sins. Later and refers here also to Kirchhoff, uh, okay, Finnish and Church Book of Sermons. In Luther, uh, Church Book of Sermons number two, 
In Luther on Galatians, Luther speaks regularly about the thing what is the only object of the faith. For example, thus, thus if I am to gain comfort and in a struggle of conscience or in the agony of death, I must take hold of nothing except Christ alone by faith. And I must say, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who suffered, was crucified and died for me. In his wound and death I see my sin, and in his resurrection I see victory over sin. Death and devil and my righteousness and life will neither hear, hear nor see anything but he. So this is very narrow window. Okay, end of the quote. I interpret that among Lehtonen these points of Luther's text function against Mannerma's goal that also a union which is inside a believer would be included in doctrine of justification. And I'm based here in this, in this opinion in Concordia of 2000. Hannu, Hannu may comment this later. Because he thinks that the basis of justification and the object of the faith always are one and the same thing. Thus, when union is inside, included to justification, this is enough to turn the focus of faith at least partly inside of the believer. Lehtonen brings out how this FC's point of view suits well to the idea of Luther, which originated from his tower experience. Among this central idea of Luther, the righteousness of God, is not an active but a passive righteousness. Lehtonen identifies this Luther's active righteousness with the ontological righteousness, which term the FC uses. When speaking about inhabitatia day, the dwelling of Trinity, God, in the believer through faith, which is in FC, is directly separated from the righteousness of faith of which Paul, Paul is speaking. Now Lehtonen proposes that this one thought of Manerma is reflecting both the Christology and though the doctrine of justification. In Christology it is reflected so that Manerma holds Christ as a sinner since the incarnation from his conception in a virgin Maria. Instead of this, Christ was according to Luther, Lehtonen brings out several quotes from Luther about this, made a sinner afterwards, e.g. either on the cross or the baptism of Christ, where the sins of the entire world were casted on him. In justification, it is reflected so that Manerma considers, at least partly, as the righteousness of faith, the presence of Christ in faith, not only Christ on the cross and forgiveness of sins. According to Lehton and his functions against Luther, whose main idea since the Tower experience was a distinction between the passive and the active righteousness of God. When highlighting the presence of God in faith as the righteousness of faith, Manama rejects the Luther's idea that the active righteousness of God could not be our righteousness in front of God. Okay, we are near that now. Contributions. I have described about three different groups, each of which has a different attitude to the concept of union and its relation to justification. The first group is the Finnish Luther research itself. Union is here a confessed part of justification. This group I have described in the first part of this lecture. The love is openly included in faith through Christ dwelling in it. Dwelling in it. The second group is the one which was centrally creating the book Turhentulko Uskon Buddhistus. Represent an idea or a point of view where the dwelling of God or Christ in the faith was divided into two forms of existence, union and inhabitatia day. The former is included in the justification, the later not, but rather to the sanctification. By this means the members of this group think that they could also save the FC's teaching about inhabitat your day as a true thing. This group is to be considered as partly accepting the Mandarma's way of thinking about union, although they do not draw all the same conclusions from it as Mandarma. The third group then was, the, on the other hand, the minority part of the first edition of the book Turhentuko Uskon Uudistus, 
on the other hand, the members of the so-called Concord, Concordia sphere. These do not at all include union, which is identified quite totally to inhabit the day, into the justification, but rather to a sequence of it, to its result. Because of their point of view about the union, groups one and two have apparent difficulties to separate love from faith, in spite of the fact that at least one member of the group, two, have expressed such an intention. I didn't handle it now, but it, it was so. I see here an unsolved problem from the Lutheran point of view, which speaks about the doctrine of faith alone when speaking about the doctrine of justification. Lehtonen points out the problem about Manorma in his Christ, Christ, Christology, in the, so in Manorma's Christology, in the talk of Christ as a real sinner since the Incarnation. It's obvious that this emphasis of Manorma's Luther interpre interpretation in Ipsa 1979 and the other, other print 1981 wasn't without problems. In Finland, e.g., Arto Seppänen has criticized Lehtonen's point of view about Manner's theme about Christ as a real sinner. See his doctoral thesis, Union of Christi, page 42. The other idea of Lehtonen identifying the inhabitat today with the active righteousness of God and, on this basis, rejecting the union from the use justification because it confronts Luther's idea of the Tower experience deserves more attention. Tiderna runnit iväg för oss och vi ger utrymme för, för någon fråga eller något som vi kan koppla framåt för att diskussionerna om detta bör föras. Så varsågod, kort och gott. Olle Hyvä, Reiva Askela. Tulla verka tänne. Thank you for a very good paper. Uh, you brought uh, main persons in Finland about this discussion well in front of us. There is one book which is missing, and it is very important book, and for this group here in Nella, it's important to mention. The leader of the Confessional Lutheran Church of Finland, Dr. Markus Arela, published a book 1998, 1998, Thesis of Justification. Thesis of Justification. It's a very good book, I have to say, but it is not well known in Finland, as we see from this also when you didn't mention it. And it's a very interesting book. I have just studied it very recently because of my paper which I was writing. Uh, he really says, he takes his second stand, second stand. Uh, he says that, yes, it is clear that there is the uh, forensic justification. We have to be strong in that. He says many theses on this forensic justification, imputed justification. But we can divide union and inhabitatio. We can divide. And he really puts union to uh, justification as we did in, in this paper 1998. Actually, I have to say that I was not well writing in this book in 1996-7, but now I am ready to stand with this, that religion. Uh, I, I, I here support Marco Sarela in this point. Maybe I say still this, that it's very interesting that after Luther, Hollatius, Hollatius, uh, in 16th century, took this stand also, that we have to divide with union and hiapetatio. They are different things. Thank you. Have you a short comment to this? Uh, well, yes. Uh, thank you for this uh, comment. I know this book and it is with me in my uh, back. I can show it to you. Uh, I have read it, but uh, I have to... Uh, the, the time is... A little, maybe it is a mistake to leave him away about this. Uh, but uh, I thought that it would be the most important thing and that I present those three groups and uh, it is always possible that someone is missing. 
Oscar? I would like to know how you yourself will interpret those passages by Luther, which Mammonite uses so much. In Ipsa Fide Christ, the Christus Adest, from the Galatians, which you uh, apparently think that Fabio Concord is the right interpretation of. But in the Galatians, there are clearly places where the, the presence of Christ is in the middle of justification. It's not love, as Luther says, that is our justice. But what okay. is it? It's Christ in faith. Uh -huh. and, and, and other places like uh, Donum and Gratia, those, those parts in Luther's uh, theology where he definitely talks about two elements of justification, always stressing the, 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 the favor element, always stressing the Christ for us, but always also including uh, the, 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 the renewal by faith and faith itself. How would you deal with that? And I, I think you can't deal with Amanama without doing a job there yourself. Yes, okay. I, I think this is a question for me. Yes, okay. Uh, it, it is true. I, I have read this. Uh, one part of my exam was to read through all this Galatian, and I mark every place where Amanama has studied it. So Luther's, uh, Luther's comment on Galatians. And uh, it is not always clear, there are many different mentions about this union, about Christ's heart, and they, they, are, they have different, and, and they can uh, be explained on different things, different ways. For example, uh, uh, it is clear that uh, Christ is uh, dwelling in our heart of, of a believer, uh, but I didn't uh, take my own opinion here. I, I only describe other there, but uh, I, have, I have my opinion. And um, uh, uh, for example, uh, one, one way to, to, uh, to tell this is that, uh, of course, faith is needed uh, to take, take this uh, atonement for, him, for oneself. And also, the truth is that uh, the Holy Spirit must work it. And the situation is that before a man believes, he is uh, not believing, the word of God is going to him, and the Holy Spirit opens his heart. Uh, then, uh, Holy Spirit, after that, comes to heart, but does not stop working faith. It is a continuing process. We do, we, it is just not, not like we go to the room and we just make the lights on. But it, the Holy Spirit must always, all the time, work and create faith inside us. And in this respect, it is possible to say that it, the, it is a part of doctrine of justification. But I wouldn't say that it is a part of justification. And it, is, uh, and, and it is also a part of, it is possible to say, it, it is a justice in us, because it can be considered a sanctification. But uh, there is a very interesting situation, this is not my own idea, it's from people also, that uh, when Holy Spirit, which is not strictly separated from Christ, is working and influencing my belief from my heart. It is, in a way, a part of a doctrine of justification, but it is, uh, in another way, it is uh, as a part of third uh, doctrinal part, for not atonement, but sanctification. It is, it is making my belief, working with my belief. That is one explanation of it. The other way of thinking is that, uh, of course, when we are baptized, the, the water works that uh, the Christ is uh, like, like our souls to us. And uh, it is a very near, near picture and very, I, I loved it very much. And it has been very important to me, this, this baptism as a cloth which is protecting me from the hatred of God. 
So that is the other way of thinking those parts that uh, Luther's speaking is not quite scientific. It is uh, it is creative. It is describing. It is like it is not written always. It is, for example, in Galatians, it is thought, which is took from Luther's mouth, and then he is very rich when he is speaking. And we have to be very careful when we examine this kind of text and decide this is like scientific. No, it is not. It is like free speech. And when you look at this Galatian commentary like a free speech and you understand that the laws of the speech is free speech, you get more uh, weapons to uh, understand. The confessional books are more like science, a little bit, but not, not, all, not, at all, not completely. But, but uh, I think that uh, when uh, FC speaks without not so much parables as Luther. It is more exact and more careful. That is maybe that I can give for that question.